everyone. I'm sending a special hello to any of the children watching this morning. And if they have wandered out of the room, feel free to call them back for this story for all ages. It is called John Murray and the Winds of Change. It involves some adventures at sea that they won't want to miss and some Playmobil people. So we are Unitarian Universalists. And this particular story focuses on the universalist part of our faith's history. That is because universalism in this country is celebrating a big birthday this year. It is celebrating 250 years since its beginning in 1770. Imagine a birthday cake with 250 candles on it. That would be pretty exciting, would it? Well, I don't have any presents for us to open, but I do have the wonder box for us to look inside and this will help us get started. Inside the wonder box. Yes. And if you can tell what this is, it's made of paper. So you put it on water, it might float. If you have any guesses. That's right, it's a paper boat. And a boat plays a, plays a key role in the story that I'm about to tell you. The boat in the story is called The Hand in Hand. It carried a man named John Murray from England all the way across the Atlantic Ocean. He was heading to New York to start a new life. He didn't have much in his bags, but he did carry a broken heart. He hadn't always had a broken heart. He had been a passionate minister in Ireland and England. He had loved school and his family, but recently he had been fired from his job, and soon after his wife and child got sick and died. He was even put in jail for a short time because he couldn't pay his bills. Things were going from bad to worse. So he boarded a boat called the Hand in Hand to leave his old life behind and see what he could do to start over in a new country. Across the ocean was a man named Thomas Potter. Thomas was a successful farmer and deeply spiritual man. He couldn't read, but he heard the Bible when others read it aloud. And he also heard of this new idea spreading that God loved all people, not just some above others. This rang so true to him that he gathered friends and neighbors to read the Bible and to talk about this and other spiritual ideas. They met so often that his wife Mary eventually asked if they might meet outside of the house. So Thomas built a simple meeting house or chapel of sorts in hopes that a minister might come to lead them. He waited ten long years and he prayed to God to send a minister for them. And then one day in the fall of 1770, when the leaves were beginning to change color, a heavy fog rolled in. That was before GPS for mapping, and the ship that carried John Murray ran aground in New Jersey instead of New York. John and a few others volunteered to leave the ship, go on land, and get directions and supplies. As he was walking ashore, John saw a farmhouse with a small chapel or church beside it. It belonged to Thomas Potter. Thomas Potter greeted John and gave him food, food for everyone on the ship, and invited John to come back and have dinner with him that night. When John came back, Thomas Potter showed him the chapel. Potter said he believed in the loving God who wanted to accept all people into heaven. John said that he believed the same thing. Thomas Potter told John that he had built the chapel and was waiting for God to send him a minister. You, John, are that minister. I have waited for you a long time. John did not want to hear this. He was not a preacher anymore, and he was determined to never preach again. Yet Thomas Potter seemed confident that John was the universalist preacher he had been waiting for, and he asked John to preach on Sunday. I can't preach on Sunday, said John, because as soon as the wind changes, my boat will set sail, and I must be on it. If the boat has not sailed by Sunday, will you preach? asked Thomas Potter. If I am still here on Sunday, I will preach, said John Murray. Now what do you think happened? Did the wind blow the sailboat away, taking John Murray with it? 
no. No wind blew and no ship sailed. John Murray preached that Sunday morning, September 30th, 1770, in the chapel Thomas Potter built for him many years before. And the universalist message of the power of love was good news to many who heard it that morning. It was good news for John. The winds of change blew yet again for John Murray. He now wanted to preach more than anything, and he did for many years. He did set sail later that Sunday for New York, but he returned very soon after to preach again at Thomas Potter's Chapel and many times in the following years. He traveled from Virginia all the way throughout New England to share this big new idea of a universal love for all people, no matter what mistakes you might have made. Now in the year 2020, each of us as Unitarian Universalists can continue that work of John Murray and Thomas Potter by making sure that in our families, in our congregation, and in the wider community, everyone knows the importance of each and every person, no matter our differences. Well, it has been fun sharing this story of our Universalist faith with you. And I hope that you might carry this message of love for everybody into your life this week and the weeks going forward. I think I need to get these Playmobil people back to Marissa. See you next time. Thanks.